What is up YouTube, XX Solutions here and today I am bringing you another video and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to install package file game dumps on your PlayStation 4 console. Now this strictly is for 4.05 firmware so if you are not on 4.05 on your PlayStation 4 console this will not work. So in this tutorial I'm simply going to be showing you how to install and run the actual games, not how to convert them. I may make a separate tutorial or video on how to do that and I also won't be showing you where to download the games from as I may or may not get in trouble but I have a couple already downloaded and I'm obviously going to show you how to install it so the first thing you're going to need is a USB stick or external hard drive now the reason why I say external hard drive is some of the games are relatively big and I have an external hard drive that's around two terabytes so it has enough storage to obviously store a game on there if you have a big USB stick then that's perfectly fine but not everyone has a very large USB stick and some of the PlayStation 4 package file games are very very big if you're installing small games and you're able to fit it on there then that's perfectly fine but an external hard drive is very very useful for this tutorial if you already have one. In this tutorial though I am going to be using a USB stick as the game I am going to be installing is around 4 gigabytes, which is perfectly fine and the other requirement is obviously a PlayStation 4 console running 4.05 firmware. So the first thing we're going to want to do is plug in your USB stick to your computer and what we're going to do is we're simply going to format it. Now you can use the format as XFAT or FAT32. This is completely up to you. Now I do recommend using XFAT if the game is 4 gigs and above as it just makes it a lot easier to transfer and usually if you use FAT32 it's not actually going to transfer over if the game is above 4 gigabytes. So if it's a very big game then obviously use XFAT and if it's a small game under 4 gigabytes and that's completely fine you can go ahead and use FAT32. I always use XFAT so I'm going to choose this and I'm going to hit on start OK and you can see format has been completed. Now that we have freshly formatted our USB stick we can go ahead and open it and now what you're going to want to do is obviously download a package file of your choice. Now this works with PlayStation 2 games, Sega Genesis games, Super Nintendo games and obviously PlayStation 4 games as well so this process will work regardless of whatever game you are installing. For this video I am going to be using a PlayStation 2 game which was originally an ISO converted into a package file. All we're going to want to do is simply drag your package file into your USB stick and again if you are transferring a PlayStation 4 package file then this will work exactly the same but obviously may take longer as the PlayStation 4 games are relatively big. I thought I'd quickly also mention that if you haven't already set up the jailbreak process then be sure to watch my previous video on how to set that up otherwise this will not work. Once the file has successfully transferred we can go ahead and right click on our USB stick and simply press on eject. Now the USB stick is safe to eject and we can go ahead and plug it into our console. Now over over to our console all we're going to want to do is simply head over to settings go up to users guide and we're going to run the ps4 exploit once inside of the exploit host menu we're simply going to be focusing on x vortex as this payload will simply unlock the package files and allow you to run the games hit x on it and it may take a couple of seconds and you should see launching payload and then it says done after that be sure to press the playstation button on your controller not circle as this will not work and now we should have homebrew access now as you can see we have the padlocks on the game that is perfectly normal because obviously we're not able to launch these automatically so this payload actually unlocks them and obviously allows us to play them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to settings again go all the way to the bottom and we can now see that we have debug settings now the payload also unlocks debug settings to allow you to install the package files. Simply press X go inside of game package installer and then this should load the packages on your USB stick as you can see there this is Grand Theft Auto by C. City. simply press X on it and then it will go ahead and install to your hard drive. Now depending on how big your package file is this may take a little while. This game is only 4 gigabytes so it's not actually taken that long but if it's around 50 to 60 gigabyte game then it may take a good 10 to 15 minutes. Okay as you can see it's been installed as our notification says so. We can go ahead and press the PlayStation button in again and as you can see on the screen we have Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Now as you can also see I have a couple of other games that are also package files. We have Ratchet and Clank, San Andreas, Mega Man, Minecraft. We also have the new Super Nintendo emulator collection and also Sega Genesis. I will leave a link in the description below on where you can download the Sega Genesis collection and also the Super Nintendo collection. For other games you can simply find them on forums or google them and that should be completely
completely fine. So now what I'm going to do is simply run the game and it should run straight from the package file on your hard drive. As you can see, we have the PlayStation 2 watermark. Now I do believe in some of the PlayStation 2 games, you can actually change the resolution and settings, but not all of them you can. So you may have to stick with the horrible aspect ratio. And as you can see, the game is running perfectly fine. There is no lag, no latency, nothing like that. So that is really, really cool that you can do this. Obviously some other PlayStation 2 emulator games may not work as well. It just sort of depends. Not every game runs absolutely smoothly, but I can 100% vouch for this game. This is running absolutely fine. So I'm just going to pause here. And if I press the PlayStation menu button, you can see that it's gone back to the main menu. The game is still running in the background. So if I press X, boom, we still have the game absolutely fine. I'm going to simply go back to the main menu, press start and close the application. And I'm just going to show you a few others. I'm going to simply load the Super Nintendo emulation collection. And as you can see, we have Super Nintendo Station for the PlayStation 2 because it's using the PlayStation 2 uh, ROMs. So if I go into CD-ROM and then go down to ROMs, there are a bunch of ROMs that are pre-installed in this package file. There are absolutely hundreds. So I'm simply going to load a random one. So let's pick Castlevania. We now have a Super Nintendo game running on our PlayStation 4 console. That is pretty awesome indeed. And as you can see, it's running perfectly fine as well. Audio is good and there is no latency whatsoever. So that is pretty much it, guys. I hope I've helped in a way. Comment, rate, subscribe, and look good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.